Hello, my name's Mark and welcome to RC Hacker. Now, what we have here, recently, this recently arrived from Foxtech FPV and it's the Mini D1 quality SD card video recorder, cased. Now, let's uh, have a look. It, it's not actually labelled that on the, on the front, it just says one channel HD recorder. Anyway, it's a nice box. And, yeah, look at it, that's it. It's really small. So, oh, look what else we got in here. We've got a couple of AV cables. We got a. Oh, so we got. We got a plug pack. Oh, let's let's say, twelve volts, one amp. Okay. I've got a big fat remote as well, with two IRs on it. That's interesting. So, yep. Yeah. Got a remote control. Got two pieces of sticky Velcro, so we can stick that to our FPV gear. And there's a um, small CD in there. It doesn't even say what it is. All it says is how much is on it. So it doesn't look to be too much data on there. Um, Unfortunately, I can't read this because I've got a slot loading, slot loading CD-ROM, so I've got to get all my drivers off the internet. Anyway, anyway, so um, so that's the unboxing. Let's have a look inside. Of course, before we take it apart, let's have a quick look. What we got here? We got audio, audio, visual, audio, video in. Audio video out. We've got our power. We've got our uh, nice big SD card slot IR, and there's three LEDs there. So that's pretty simple. Nice and compact. It's a nice aluminium aluminium case too. Okay, let's see what we have. Yeah. Uh, not a lot on this side. Let's take the other screws off. Okay. And there we go. What does that look like? Is that a battery there? Oh, I was unaware this actually had an internal battery, so there you go. Um, There's a small backup battery there. Uh, this looks like some sort of RAM. This looks like the main. This looks like the main processor there, and a number of other small exposure exponents. It's what is that? It's Mini DVR version 1.3. It's uh, a two-board construction. Yeah, I think I'll um. Let's change the zoom level and get a uh, closer look. Okay, so let's have a look under here. They've obviously got some sort of quality control. It says QC passed on there. Let's see if we can pull this sticker off in one hit. Let's see what we oh, fail. Okay, so I don't know if we can see that. It says 4x32 SD RAM. Fair enough. Uh, what I'm going to do here... So I'm going I'm to take a bunch of photos, so then we can... Um, I'll move to the computer so we can actually try and look up some data sheets and stuff. Alright, let's see what's underneath. In between these two. Okay, so we got. It's obviously our battery. Let's try and get this plug out. 
She's a tough one. There we go. So this is the other side of our main board. There's quite a lot to this. I Some large capacitors there and inductor there as well. Maybe this is some sort of charge pump. Um, I see up to, up the top here. Try not to shake so much. Our um, SD card connections look like they're labelled there. We got there's a 27 megahertz crystal I can see just there as well, and I don't know how many pins that processor has. Is it a BGA? Hmm, hard to tell. There's some extra headers over here that aren't used. Maybe. Are they wired up? Maybe they're extra um, video outputs. Maybe it, maybe it's got two extra video outputs on it or something like that. And this other component's got a bit of... A little bit of sticky stuff on it. Let's see if we can get a, get a shot of that. Okay, it's just worth noting on, on the other that there's not much to this board here. All it is is you know audio audio video in and out. There's one big inductor on there. I don't know what for, and a battery, and that's it. And you, you can see labeled there we've got the video in, ground, audio in, video out, ground, audio out, and then ground and VCC and that obviously corresponds to these wires here. There's our ground and VCC and then our AV in and AV out. So I would, oh, I'm speculating here, but these other ones make sense that perhaps they're um, extra outputs. It's hard to say. I, I really don't know. You know. Does this have a user interface when you when you plug it in and uh, look at it on the screen. Perhaps it does, perhaps there's a bit more to it. Um, are these enabled or do you need different firmware? Yeah, I'm not really sure. While I'm at it, I thought I might also just have a look at the battery there. Now I haven't used this or turned it on or anything, this is just how it came and that measures 4.03 volts. So. I don't know, is that enough for a lithium ion cell, a fully charged one, or a bit much? I've just got to, you know, do a bit of homework. It's a bit more than the 3.7 volts. Maybe it is fully charged. I'd say it's just a single cell lithium ion battery. Maybe. And there doesn't seem to be any writing on this whatsoever. So I'd say there might be some circuitry in there. It's um yeah, so let's assume that's three point seven volts. At least we know that uh this thing we've got the potential to run this off I'm hoping less than twelve volts because my whole FPV system runs on runs on two cell and I am actually hoping to run this on two cell so I will experiment with that and uh I'll let you know how that goes. Another thing worth noting is it says Xbox HD recorder and maybe that's what it was designed to do was for recording stuff while you play on the Xbox So yes, yeah, that's it. I think I might switch to the other to the computer So we'll um have a look at some of the data sheets on these. Maybe we can find something on this on this main processor here All right, welcome back now. I did a bit of homework and I looked on the Foxtech uh, website the, the product page and um, this is what 
it bored me too. They've got a couple of documents. They've got the manual and they've also got another little, I don't know what we call it, expander interface manual. But we'll look at the, the manual for starters and um, supports power up record, motion detect record and scheduled record and manual record, SD, key, SD card up to 32 gig expandable and directly playback by TV sets monitor and PC by SD card reader. Yeah, 30 frames per second and 704 by 567. Well, that's really a weird resolution, but oh, okay. Um, MP3 audio format, real-time stamp on videos, overwrite. I'm not sure if that is optional or not, whether the actual um, timestamp on the video is optional or not. There's a manual motion detects fe feature, audio input, audio compression, 8 kilohertz. So uh, we can expect the audio to not be that great a quality. 5, 15 or 30 frames per second optional. This is interesting. TV out enables better resolution by TV set. So I presume that means that the video signal is just passed through, so it's not actually uh, modified or anything. And th that's quite handy when you want to, of course, you want to stick it in line um, between your receiver and your goggles, so you can record at the same time as watching, of course. And then your your receiver set doesn't need two AV outputs, which is an advantage. Keeps everything cheaper and lighter. Um, yeah, direct ca connection with camera. Support IR remote operation. Built-in ADC for external keyboards. So that's um, an analog to digital converter. Um, that's in the other document. We'll have a look at that. Built-in RS232 series port. It enables external remote keyboard for operation and software setup. Um, yeah, okay, we'll move on to that. 5 to 35 volts for wide power supply usage. Now this is good. This means I can run this off of uh, two cells, which is what the rest of my FPV gear is on. My radio and everything like that. And this is a good one. Uh, low power consumption, okay. Electronic dog ensures normal working. Now what that means, it basically means that the chipset has got a what's called a watchdog. So if for any reason it crashes or, or something like that, it will automatically reset itself. So going through the code, if you're looking at actual the source code of what's on this uh, on the MCU in here, every the watchdog is set up so if you don't call a certain function every millisecond or microsecond, it, it depends on the settings. If that function doesn't get called, if that timer doesn't get reset, then the whole thing will reset. So that just stops it if it gets caught in any sort of infinite loop and um, it'll just reboot itself. So rather than crash, this, this thing will just reboot. And it's got the board dimensions and weights. All right, instructions for the remote there. Screen icons instruction. So obviously it overlays stuff on the screen on, a, on its output, and that's how the user interface works. And then you've got all the settings and stuff, different image qualities, frame rate, resolution, all the record setting. This motion detection, I'm going to find. This is really interesting. This was a surprise to me, and and I do a bit of photography of hummingbirds, and I've made this monstrosity of an Arduino project just to detect hummingbird movement and uh, use CHDK on the Canon cameras as well and, uh, yeah that could be interesting potentially you could set it on motion detection and then have it record automatically when it starts flying so you don't have to worry about um, when it's sitting there not doing anything no, that's an option anyway uh, scheduled timing as well Bit of an alarm system. The system will delete the first 300 megabyte megabyte files once SD card is full to save new files. Okay, so you can set it to do an overwrite, which basically means it'll work in a loop recorder um, function. Of course, you know you'll only get the last you know bit of the loop. 
Let's have kids recording. Record section. Yeah, motion detection, sensitivity, speed, noise margin. Yeah, cool. Look, it's very customizable, which is um I, don't know, I think this is really, really clever. It's got a GPS function, but it says there is timestamp only, only GPS option. Cool. All right, let's move on to the the other one here. The um, what we call it, the expand interface manual. So yeah, it looks like there's a bit of chinglish here. Recording flash, flash. So that's that's the power one. Obviously, this one flashes when it's recording. Preview light reading flash. Menus light playback flash. So, and here's the IR receiver. And as I said, yeah, the. 3.7 volts input, so you potentially run it off 3.7 volts. Moving down, we've got, oh, this is interesting, USB port on the other side. So, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, there it is. It's not actually in use, but it looks like we could hook this up to I'd say to be a USB mass storage as well um, and it labels the other pins here there's our audio and video in audio video out TXRX alarm in alarm out it will record when grounding the point alarm in and stop record when undo well oh, cool so this is becoming very hackable. You could hook this up to any sort of external trigger or another microcontroller to um, start recording and stop recording just by pulling this pin low. And then use for expand RS-232 or alarm. So I presume this would go high or low depending on uh, whether it's, if it's in motion detect mode and it starts recording on its own, it would go into, um, that would go high and low. So potentially you could use this to drive lighting or even a circuit that would cause a video camera to start panning around or something like that you know this is really cool it's got the ADC key 1 and ADC key 2 used for expand keyboard okay and um, the power input 5 to 30 volts it's got the dimensions there ah cool now this is a little circuit for the um, for your keyboard. So if you want to make your own little keyboard, you need it looks like eight buttons and the right sized resistors. And then you can make your own little keyboard if you chose to do so. So yeah. Now going back to the chipset, I did a bit of a Google to try and find the the um, manual for this uh, chipset, but I didn't really have much luck. As far as I got was this website, Taiwanese website, Mars Semiconductor Corporation, and uh, they've got a little bit here, support VGA, 8 megapixel CMOS sensor, support SDRAM and DDRM, flashlight with IGBT and SCR, don't know what that means, 4 times digital zoom, SD card and NAND slash, USB 1.1 mass storage, okay so that's a USB we were looking at before, Embedded audio codec and TV encoder, graphic based on screen display, oh, support 2 to 7 inch LCM IF of sRGB CPU SPI. Well, it supports SPI, well, that's a communications protocol, support autofocus and motion detection. Yeah, we saw that. So there's obviously a few more functions to this chipset which aren't used, but no, all in all, it's pretty impressive. So, like, I'm pretty impressed with this purchase for 70 bucks. You get to see the quality and stuff, but it's got quite a few uses. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful. Um, if you like my stuff, please subscribe. I'll put a link down here. And um, please like, I think it's down there somewhere as well. Liking always helps, and any comments I'll endeavour to answer. And thanks for watching. Ciao.
Also, yeah, I was going to go into a lot of detail with all the little chip chipsets and stuff, for EV blogs, for the style, but really, uh, I don't think everyone's that interested in it. But if you are, I'll put a little link up here to an article on my website, and I'll have the high-resolution photos and all that sort of thing up there. So, cheers. Thanks again. Ciao.